BBC Radio Bristol. Now, it's estimated there are half a million people undiagnosed who have celiac disease in the UK. The National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence state that only between 10 and 15% of those who have the condition are currently diagnosed. To discuss this uh, and to hear a personal uh, story on celiac disease, I'm delighted once again to be joined by Dr Chris Steele. Hello, Chris. Hi, hi, Phil. Hey, nice music you got going there. You like a bit of that, do you? Lovely, yes. You know, I'm a big supporter of music for health. I think it flips your mood into something positive, doesn't it? Very powerful, very powerful. So tell us a bit about your personal interest in celiac disease as well as your professional interest. OK, well, um, I've been um, a patron of the uh, charity Celiac UK for about five years. Uh, just to help raise awareness of the condition. And then two years ago, uh, I actually got celiac disease myself. Wow. Abdominal pain, bloating, terrible diarrhea. Uh, went to a gastroenterologist who actually said, I think you've got IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. But you knew better. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, no, I didn't. No. <laughs> I thought, no, it, it, certainly I could have IBS, you know, sort of classic symptoms. Um, so, um, yeah, didn't respond to IBS treatment, and then he said, right, OK, blood test, and sure enough, I had celiac disease. And the message there is, I believe, every patient who has IBS, because many of them diagnose themselves anyhow, yes. but any patient with IBS must be tested for celiac disease. Tell us what celiac disease is and how you test for it. Right. Well, the, it's, it's a reaction of the body to a protein called gluten, and that's found in wheat, barley, and rye. Now, it's not a food allergy. Uh, what happens, this gluten damages the lining of the intestine, and the body produces antibodies, and it's actually an autoimmune disease. And so the body's own immune system is attacking its own tissues and its own organs. So the effect of gluten... Uh, in your diet, uh, wheat, barley, and rye, misfound in bread, pasta, pizzas, pastries, cakes, biscuits, and it's, it's hidden in many foods like mayonnaise, soy sauce, sausages, fish fingers. It, 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 it's hidden in all sorts of foods. And um, if you're, um, uh, you know, obviously, I've got, I, there's no cure for the condition, uh, no medication. The only way to control this is to go onto a strict gluten free diet for life. And how would you know that you've got it? What does the diagnostic test involve? Now, it's just a simple blood test, mm -hmm. and it's actually a very accurate blood test, it's at least 90% accurate. And, you know, First of all, you do the blood test. Now, if you're going to have a blood test, do not change a normal diet. Right. So if someone thinks, um, yeah, oh, I've got those symptoms, bloating, abdominal pain, diarrhea, I'll get the blood test from the GP, you should wait about four weeks and continue eating normal food, even though you've got your symptoms, and then go for your blood test because then that will pick up whether you've got antibodies to the uh, reaction to gluten. And if you have, do they then have to follow it up with taking a sample of your bowel, or do they not do that anymore? Well, they're going away from that. I mean, it's still the standard practice, Phil. I mean, I had to have a biopsy. It's, I mean, it's nothing, you know, it's a tiny tube, and they give you a sedative, and actually the sedative is interesting because it wipes out the memory of what yes. you've been through. It's great. Yes. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so they took a biopsy, and that confirmed that, you know, the lining of my intestine was quite severely damaged. And because of that, I mean, you know, I was diagnosed two years ago, so I was 64. Yes. Um, and, you know, they, a lot of people are surprised that, you know, no symptoms before that. But I obviously had the condition without obvious symptoms. And so, therefore, I wasn't absorbing calcium, so I've got osteoporosis. And what people don't realize is that because you're not absorbing other nutrients, you know, anemia with fatigue and tiredness is common. Mm. But also, and this is fascinating, um, uh, celiac disease um, um, can cause infertility, recurrent miscarriages, depression. If you've got celiac disease, it's an autoimmune disease. And one in three patients with celiac disease will have another autoimmune disease, wow. such Isn't as that... type 1 diabetes. And how has your quality of life improved since you were diagnosed and you're obviously now on a gluten-free diet? Do you feel much better? Oh, yeah, m m much better. I mean, you know, those symptoms have gone. But, 
you know, you, you, you think you're being pretty strict, but because it's hidden in so many foods, and going out for a meal is a nightmare. Yeah. You know, a lot of restaurants don't know what gluten is or celiac. Um, it, it's becoming better now. They are providing gluten-free facilities. But, um, yeah, no, a, a lot better. But if I come across gluten accidentally, then I'm ill the next day. And just to give you an example, some patients are so sensitive yes. to gluten um, that um, they have to have, um, of course, their own cupboard with food in, in, in the kitchen, their own toaster. Because oh. if, if they put their gluten-free bread in the family toaster, even crumbs from normal bread can trigger off the celiac. Oh, yeah. That's fascinating, and I gather that it, it runs in your family too. Your son also has it, and he's hoping to compete in the Olympics. Well, no, he, no, he doesn't have it. Now, the, he and I launched this campaign this week to right. point out to people that uh, if, if someone has got celiac disease in your family then you are ten times more likely to get it. Okay. Now, we're talking the immediate family, Phil, your parents, brothers, sisters, or children. Okay. Now, I've got four children. My younger son, he's an Olympic 400-meter runner, ran in Beijing, uh, so he went off and got tested straight away. And he's okay at the moment? He, he's, oh, yeah, he doesn't have celiac disease. Okay. But my other three children, I keep nagging them, they haven't gone for a blood test yet. If you have the test and the blood test is negative, does that mean you're never going to get it, or can you develop it later in life? No, you, well, no, that, that, that means you, that's it, you're negative. You're, okay. you, you're, your body's not producing antibodies uh, to gluten, and it's extremely unlikely you're, you're ever going to get the condition if your test is negative. So if people want to find out more about this condition, where should they go, Chris? OK, uh, the celiac website. Now, let me spell celiac. C-O-E-L-I-A-C. Celiac dot org dot uk and the helpline is oh eight four five three oh five two oh six oh well thank you for sh joining us again chris always good to have you on the show and to hear your own personal story as well made that all the more poignant thank you so much yep. for joining us and thank come and speak to us again soon yeah thanks a lot phil cheers there you go the dr chris Steele there talking about his own celiac disease uh, and uh, his campaign to raise awareness of celiac disease. Uh, we're actually going to be talking about malnutrition in hospitals.